so today uh, I wanted to discuss a little bit more um, on mid game playing. So one of the one of my subscribers messaged me uh, over YouTube, and they were talking about how a lot of my content is mostly for beginning and then more towards advanced level players. And there's a little gap in the middle where it kind of um, lacks a little bit. So uh, thank you for bringing that to attention as well. Um, try to get as many players in um, here that can get advice because uh, there's always something new that you can learn. Uh, so hopefully that I can, you know, help you guys out. And um, now where he's at, I would say he's more beginning level, but there is definitely a gap that I saw and I definitely passed it over just by summoning a ton of monsters. But a lot of free play players can't really uh, get past that gap, especially um, when once you uh, start getting around, I'd say to Tulane Forest, maybe even towards Tamor Desert. You know, if you don't get any good monsters or get any crystals for premium packs, and you can't get any good monsters, it's really hard to progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a few farmable monsters and what you can do each day to try to kind of. Um, Help yourself uh, get out of that little ditch because you start out um, in the beginning of the game pretty well off and you know you do those first few scenario and they're pretty easy but then it kind of dips a little bit until you can get better monsters and then uh, then it goes back up and it gets easier definitely gets easier um, and it's it's pretty hard to get out of that ditch so let me let me go ahead and go through some of these farmable monsters these are farmable through uh, secret dungeons or through um, scenario stages and I'll go ahead and go through which ones you could potential potentially use um, so the fire Inagami is one of them he is a good monster uh, I don't know if I would recommend six starring him um, if you don't have any other options and yeah he's he's fine at a six star he can do some damage but he can be squishy if you look at that base HP as a you know, he's an attack-based monster. His HP is going to be a little, little bit lower, um, of course. And But overall, you know, he's a really good farmer, and I use him in Secret Dungeons sometimes. Um, you know, so I've got better options now, so I don't use him as much. But I used him when I was kind of just starting out. Um, so, and then what are some other ones that you could possibly use? Kali and the Fire Inferno are also very good monsters to use. So we'll go through and we'll see, we'll go through, actually we'll just go through and uh, we'll look at the farmable monster. So if, if you do manage to get a water Inigami, he is a good alternative for a speed leader. So he increases the attack speed of ally monsters with water attribute by 30, uh, 23%. So that's that's an alternative if you don't have a speed leader, or at least water monsters. The fire golem can be good, but you need good runes, so I would, wouldn't worry about him for now. Um, some of these monsters, you know, if you do manage to get them, like, Wind Elemental is actually pretty good. Um, uh, especially if you don't have a monster that can, you know, do a lot of dots uh, or continuous damage effects. Um, basically, dots stand for damage over time, uh, so continuous damage. And um, and it's it has a self-buff, so it's, it's, not, it's not a bad option if you do get one. Um, you know, any three-star that you can manage when you're just starting out, will help you in the long run, um, at least up until when you start doing premium packs. But, uh, you know, the War Bear right here, he's not too too bad. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend him. I wouldn't recommend six-starring him at all. But as a three-star monster, he can help you. Wind One, again, speed leader, but not very good. <clears throat> now, the Water High Elemental is actually really good. Uh, same with the Fire High Elemental. And the Water Howl is a good healer. So starting out, if you do manage to get a Water Howl, there's your healer. Or if you can farm a uh, Belladion, which is the Light Inugami, then um, that's also good. So Griffin, Wind Griffin, um, also a good monster that you'll probably uh, use long term. Um, there you go. There's the Fire Inferno and the Fire High Elemental. Those are both farmable. You know, it, yeah, it is tough to get three-star monsters, but if you do put some time and effort into it and you get pretty lucky, you can... Pull one of those, and um, they're actually really good monsters that you'll use. Callie, you'll probably end up using indefinitely. I mean, she's really good. And now the guild uh, battle's coming out. She's got that self-buff. Um, 
on her third skill when you awaken her, that right there is uh, very, very useful for a three versus three. And the Inferno has double AoE attacks when you awaken him, um, which is also pretty useful for secret dungeons. And of course, he can do some serious damage uh, when you're low level. And if you do get a, uh, a Fire Werewolf, it is okay. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best, but it definitely will help you, especially as a three-star monster when you're just starting out. But these are just some of the options that you have if you can't really pull anything. And then there's the uh, Fire Nagami. And then, of course, the Fire Hellhound, you've already got one. Hopefully, you didn't feed it away. Now, at this point, I don't think you're probably going to be getting through these ones because these are a little bit tougher. But if you do, um, Wind Grim Reaper is not too bad for starting out. Fire Living Armor... I wouldn't recommend, uh, at least when you're just starting out. The, the, okay, the Water Lizard Man is really good um, if you can really get him ruined right. Just uh, against wind-based teams, if you know, if you got, if you're going up a really high, you know, high wind-based team in arena, then you can bring this guy along, and he's really annoying uh, for the uh, opposing team. But I wouldn't recommend him at, at a beginning level. Uh, and then, of course, here's Ramagos, where you can farm him. But at that point, you probably already got Ramagos through a secret dungeon. Which, everyone knows Ramagos is not bad, actually. He's actually really good. Uh, I know a lot of higher-level players that use him in Arena against Arnold's. So, we'll go back through here. So, I showed you some of the fire-based ones and some of the water-based ones. Now, some of the secret dungeons that you can farm to get some of them. Let's see... I'm not sure that, I don't think you can, you, know, you can't farm the Grim Reapers. You can farm the Magical Archer. I wouldn't recommend her so much, but if you do get in a secret dungeon, I would just uh, farm this, you know, as many three-star monsters as you can get. That's that's pretty much your goal. You just want to get a bunch of options when you're starting out. And um, what are some other ones here? You know, some of these, you know, some of these other ones aren't very good. But, you know, a three stars is a three star, but I'm, I'm looking more for ones that you might use longer term. M maybe getting yourself into mid game when you're making four star and five star monsters. Um, him right here, the fire bounty hunter is not bad either because he can uh, buff up your allies. And he's got this attack here, which is okay. You know, it's RNG based, but it can uh, deal some damage if you're lucky. Um, kind of like, but, you know, if you get a water bounty hunter, that's even better. Because you'll you'll use them long term, and then of course any four star that you get in the beginning of the game will help you out. Um, all right, so look at these. All right, some of these farmable ones that you'd find pretty useful. The water hellhound can you know pretty be pretty helpful, especially uh, with his group hunt. But I think the fire one's better just because he's got the uh, buff for your allies to do more damage. Uh, the Water Garuda, very, very important for Dark Hall, for the Giants, B7, for TOA, uh, for Dragons, B10. You'll, you'll use Konamaya for quite a while, so it's good to just build him up now. And he's got that third skill when you awaken him. Very useful. Um, the Fairy, you know, you'll, she'll be your healer for the beginning of the game. And probably for probably at least a week or two, but I would suggest fast going over and getting yourself uh, Belladion, which is the Light Inugami. Where are you? Oh yeah, the Light Inugami, very 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 useful. I can't I can't uh, stress how important she is. Um, you know this heal right here will heal better than any. Single target. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. It'll heal better than the fairy. I'll, I'll tell you that. It'll heal heal better than the water fairy for sure. Uh, and and Lulu. Uh, it'll heal heal better than Lulu, which is the water hell. Because if you look at the awakened version of uh, water hell, so it recovers HP by twenty percent, and it does remove a harmful effect. But you got Konamaya for that. And um, this it's got two heal based right. Um, so this can be pretty useful at times, but I still I still find the Belladion to be ten times more useful, especially with the defense break. Um, now going back through here, 
you got, of course, I went through the farmable ones. Um, uh, now, Amazon and the Magical Archer are both farmable as well. I would say the fire ones are better than these ones. Um, the, the water one's not too bad to build up for early game. Keep that in mind. Um, if you get Arena early game, she can help you out. Because with Mediocre Runes, she could she could help you pass through Fame on. Um, but of course, you should be looking for Rep Monsters if you're just starting out. You really should look out for players that can help you uh, pass those first initial stages. Uh, just to boost you up a little bit higher because the rewards are substantially um, you know, better when you're getting up into higher tier dungeons. So you really want to get those better rewards. Better rewards make you uh, get better monsters, better runes, and then that will push you up into the next level. And uh, basically when you're farming around B7, B6, I would say, that's when you're starting to reach more uh, more advanced begin beginner level. Uh, but you're still in that early stage of uh, starting out. I would say for the first two months, you're probably, you're probably still starting out in the game and still learning a lot of new things. Um, as well as uh, building up your monsters and getting more monsters. And once you start reaching, like, Conquer 1, Conquer 2 level, and um, and you're farming Giants B7, B8, um, then you're probably around mid-level playing. And that's when you're starting to focus more on runes and, and awakening everything, like, like your important monsters, uh, your 5-star and your 6-star monsters. And at that point, you should start. You should at least have a one or two six stars, and you should be around level forty, if not just below it. And um, that's uh, that's where I would consider mid game players. Uh, a lot of mid game players, and then late game playing would probably not be until you're reaching conquer three or higher. Um, but I'd say that probably the biggest um, important thing when you're starting out is definitely your monsters. When you're looking out for everything you know you want to get as many summons as you, as you can and don't waste your crystals trying to revive your monsters just to pass one stage especially if it's a scenario uh mode you know you don't need to waste those five crystals five crystals doesn't seem like much and, or ten crystals i should say um ten crystals doesn't seem like much but you know if you do that continuously you're going to drain your crystal amount and at that point you've already lost you know, one or two summons that you could have done, and maybe one of those two summons would have been a good monster. So you really want to get as many summons in as you can when you're just starting out. So save those crystals. That, that's super important. And you also want, and assume that you're not going to get anything good as well, so that you can start farming for these uh, for these monsters right here. So I'll show you Vagabond, Light War Bear, Inigami, uh, the Fairy, all useful. Um, what are some other ones? If you uh, started, if you started playing during this event, or you play, started before this, you got the Fairy Queen. If not, it's not a big deal. You know, she's she's a good monster. I've seen I've seen pretty pretty good versions of her with uh, good runes, but I think she could be replaced uh, by other healers. So don't stress it too much. It's not like missing out one of the Hall of Heroes. You know. For the people that missed out on the uh, Acasis Hall of Heroes, they definitely missed out on that one big time. Uh, that was around, I think it was sometime last year. Uh, I can't remember, but that's how I got mine. I have never summoned any Acasis other than the Hall of Heroes. So, you know, then looking at uh, some of these four-star monsters, when you're just starting out, any four-star monster is going to help you. But you definitely, when you're looking at, you know, teams... Shoot for at least one healer, because you'll notice that when you're going through stuff, you definitely will lose HP throughout the scenario mode, and there's some heavy hitters in there, and you need it. You need an HP leader or uh, an HP uh, heal skill. Uh, so some of those could be Water Howl, Garuda, Fairy. Where are some other ones? Rena, not so much, but can be. Uh, there aren't any fire healers that are three-star monsters, except for, like, the Howls with their single target, or, well, double, I guess, but, um, you're really looking for those AoE-based ones, so the Inugami's your best bet, I would say, um, and, of course, you're given the Light Garuda, and when you awaken him, you do get a heal, 
um, which is also a revive, but it, it is fairly good. So you can also use that. So you're already given the reviver off the bat. That's that's not bad. You know, they, they were generous with that because revivers can be uh, extremely helpful when you're trying to get through tough stages that have really uh, tough hitting uh, single target. And you're definitely going to need some sometimes a healer. So definitely look at the water attributes for healing. Uh, fire can be uh, better at damage dealing generally uh, when you're just starting out. And then wind, um, they generally don't have that many good three-star monsters besides Ramagos. I would say Ramagos is a very good option to build. Not hard to make him hit hard. The Wind Yeti is actually a fairly decent healer, especially when you're doing uh, TOA. I would suggest building one of these for the early stages of TOA when you're just starting out because his heal will be pretty massive, um, at least for you low, low, lower level players, um, just because it's based on the surviving amount of allies that you have. So, you know, say you're running five monsters in TOA, you know, that, that's uh, five, five uh, times the percentage heal amount that he's going to be doing, which is pretty big, you know, so... He's good, but things that he wouldn't be useful for would be more like arena and guild battles where there's less monsters. Uh, so he's definitely a dungeons and trial ascension based healer, uh, but he, again, he can be useful. And then uh, Shannon, uh, she's a very, very decent uh, team monster because she can slow down the enemies and then buff your own. What are some other ones? Looking at here. So some of the ones that you should farm are the Wind Pixie, um, the Wind Yeti, and the Wind War Bear. What are some other ones? Wind Griffin, definitely. I think you can farm Wind Inferno, but uh, he's he's not very uh, not very hard hitting but he is fusion so if you do get one of him might as well just use him for the time being because you're gonna end up using him for fusion eventually and uh, what are some other ones michelle she's not farmable but if you do get one of her she's a she's a decent reviver and she's got a pretty good healing ability here because it increases buffs and uh decreases the uh, time on debuffs and then most of the rest are just kind of crap and then a lot of the four stars for the wind attributes are really awesome. I mean, Delphoi, Shimite, Acasis, Lucian, Orochi, Julian, Yen is pretty good, Briand, uh, he's not too bad. I've, I've seen him hit easily around 30k with a, with a good second skill. Uh, actually, it might have been the third skill. No, I think it was a second skill. Uh, Aquila, also very good. Wind Cobalt, very good. Uh, Sky Dancer, very, very good. Uh, Wuchi's okay. I, I would say he's not ideal just because his cooldown time is so large, but he can be a good CC monster if you don't have any other options. Uh, Wind Barbaric King, I think, is pretty good. I haven't tried him out, and I haven't seen the uh, damage multiply, uh, multiplier for the third skill, but this one looks pretty promising since the critical rate is at 100%. And then the rest, yeah, the five-star monsters, but um, all of them are going to be pretty useful. So, um, again, this is more geared towards um, just beginning level and also getting into that transition into mid-level players. You really want to look at your monsters and decide where you want to go from there. That's definitely what you need to do. And I know this is going to be a tough thing to say and a lot of you for you to kind of accept, but honestly, um, I think that a lot of the players need to kind of just try not to ask too much for help. Because if you depend on what others say, then you're not really playing the game for yourself. And you're not going to really learn. Um, I think one of the uh, most important things to this game is definitely learning about what works and what doesn't work. I've seen a lot of my, ba uh, my, my rune builds. Some people might disagree with, like Chimera. I know a lot of people run him with uh, Swift runes. I've, I've been running him violent for quite a while, and I've even asked some of the people that have been using my rep monster, and they say it is pretty pretty helpful, like tearing it up in uh, in giants and in uh, some dragon levels, and definitely in the water hall. Um, I mean, my chimera can almost solo uh, giant or um, 
the water hole, B7. He makes it all the way up and gets the boss all the way down to half health. So I would say just that alone is, I mean, pretty telling in itself. You know, even though his skill is uh, based on attack speed, uh, I don't think the damage multiplier is that great. Um, it can do some serious damage with defense break, but, uh, you know, you definitely got to try out runes for yourself and see what works for you, because I really like my rune build with my lag Marone. I still need to max out some of the runes and get better substats. I know a lot of the substats I have are pretty mediocre. And, uh, but generally, you know, it is okay to ask for help. Don't get me wrong there. You know, you definitely should ask for help when you're starting out. But try not to make a habit out of it. You definitely want to, like, go throughout the game and learn what works and what doesn't work. So basically, just to sum everything up, when you're just starting out with the game, you really just want to focus on your monsters. That's basically everything. The runes that you get won't be that, you know, amazing. They won't really even be that good. Um, it's just the monsters and the skill base that you build, you know, it's, that's really what it depends on. And then once you start getting more to mid game and when you start being able to get better runes, that's when your monsters start being, becoming rune dependent. And, uh, you know, even, you know, some of these less decent monsters like the water fairy can be pretty scary with good runes. Now that's, uh, you know, assuming that you're still mid game, you know, once you get to a higher tier level a lot of the top players are you won't even be using some of these three so you won't really be using these three star monsters there's maybe a handful of them that you'll ever actually use um like uh, wayne wayne is actually one of them the water bounty hunter he's got a pretty good ai and his third skill is not bad at all so you know stuff like him he, you know they're pretty good but you know most of these three star monsters you won't use very long term at least uh, once you start leaving the mid-game playing field but, you know, just keep in mind that you're going to be stuck in uh, mid-game for quite a while. Uh, so when, when you're just transitioning over from beginner level, you know, after that first month or so, uh, when you're going more towards, um, I would say, mid-game, when you're getting into, like, the higher fighter levels, may, maybe even conquer one or so, that's, that's when you need to start working on runes and everything and monsters. You need to make sure you've got the right monsters and those... That's basically how you can get some of these. And this is assuming that you can't really get those scrolls to give you the good monsters. Because after you pop so many scrolls, eventually you're gonna get you're gonna get at least one decent monster, or a couple decent monsters. You know, you look at mine. I've done a ton of summons, and I've gotten just about every good monster you can get. I'm missing I'm missing Hua, um, of course Draco, but I don't really need Draco either. Uh, I could use a Hua He. I know she's really good. Um, Especially in guild battles. Not really missing any of the water ones. A water sky dancer, I guess, and maybe the barbaric king, but I don't need those. Um, of course, I'm missing Elsa, but that's a different story. Um, succubus, not uh, not good at all, really. The wind succubus, and I'm missing Wuchi, which is not that big a deal. But I am missing Chisun, and that's pretty pretty big deal because Chisun is uh, crazy in arena when you can't get her health down as well as everyone else's health because someone you know, at least one of the monsters has full health Chisun's gonna fully heal and the cooldown on this is so so s freaking small that you can't stop her from healing pretty much everyone else unless you just AoE the entire team and this ignores the heal debuff or the heal block or whatever, so there's nothing you can do about it, but, you know, just try to take down each monster as hard as you can before she heals them, and if she violent procs, then her cooldown goes down, and then she's going to heal them back up again, that's why she's so overpowered, um, you know, if I could stop it with heal block, which would be a lot more fair, then um, I wouldn't have a problem with her, I would just throw in Arnold, heal block the shit out of her, and then just keep uh, using extortion on uh, on her whenever I get the chance, or just use my chimera to knock down her health a little bit, and then extortion the rest, and she wouldn't be able to heal because she's got the um, heal block, but that's not the case. It ignores heal block, and then that's why she's uh, really overpowered. But uh, that's I think really the counter to that is just um, AoE nuking the uh, team. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but bringing someone like Lucian, uh, yeah. But, uh, so those are some of the monsters, at least four star and below, that you can really, really focus on. At least, well, mostly three star and below that I talked about. You know, a lot of these uh, four star monsters that you're looking at, 
that I've gotten. A lot of them you won't really use that much, but some of them, you know, a, lot, a select few are, you know, decent enough to use, and they're pretty good. So I would say, and this is just, again, summing up everything uh, for the player that asked, messaged me over YouTube, definitely focus on monsters. You really want to get good monsters when you're just starting out. That's, that's all that matters is just getting at least a variety of monsters that you can use. If you don't have, you know, at least a good few options to work on, you know, you're really, you're really going to be struggling. And that's why when I started out, I did too many, I, I did so many summons. And you see, I just got a, so many monsters, but I did a little bit too long. I should have stopped after, um, after around like level 30 or so from doing just summons and started focusing on more on runes and spending my crystals on double the EXP and, uh, and refreshes or refills for the energy uh, that's really what you want to do when you get like a few good monsters that you can work on and once you do that then you can uh, you can really do some damage when you get decent monsters with good runes they can uh, really help you out in getting more crystals for more summons so that you do get that one good summon uh, maybe a five star or a really good four star like Lucian or Chisun or something now if you do, this is uh, something I've seen happen quite a few times, if you don't really have that many good monsters, but you do get one summon that's a fusion, so say you get like, uh, like, wind ninja, or yeah, I'm sorry, the uh, water ninja, or like say you get Beretta or something, now Beretta's awesome, but he is fusion, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would really say he's worth, um, I wouldn't say he's bad enough to fuse for Katarina, Katarina's not that good, um, she can be deadly with good runes, but she's really not that useful. Um, maybe in guild battles a little bit, but, you know, I would definitely say if you get, uh, we'll look more towards these. So, the Water Ninja, say you get the Water Ninja, or the or the Wind Nantail Fox, or any of the fusible four-star monsters, I would say build them up. Um, they're somewhat, they're halfway decent, uh, I'd say the only one that you really don't need to build up is probably the water, um, the, what's it called again? What is it called again? Undyne, yeah, that's what it was. The water undyne, uh, I would say not that special at all. But, um, any of the other ones, like, um, I'd say like Fire Succubus, Wind Vampire, Wind Nine Tailed Fox, um, any of those, you know, you really could build up. Don't take them past five star because then you can't fuse them away and you're stuck with some mediocre monster. Uh, the only exception I would say would really be Beretta because Beretta is a damn good monster and I wouldn't, I would say he's not really fuse worthy to just throw away for Katarina unless you have plans on making another one of him or have uh, summoned another one. I summoned two. Or I, I fused one and summoned the other. Luckily, um, so I went ahead and did the Katarina fusion. But uh, he he's pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie for uh, TOA. So hopefully that gives uh, the the viewer that uh, sent me the message. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a picture. And uh, for everyone else that's watching, um, if you're really in that ditch where you're really struggling on getting better monsters, it takes time. I'll tell you that. Uh, start looking at those farmable monsters. I've seen some people wreck arena, um, at least mid mid level players, uh, with uh, some of the farmable monsters. So that's really what you should do. Look towards the farmable monsters, and then once you start getting good summons, or you can afford, you know, to buy other packs, then you can start venturing off and uh, experimenting with different monsters that aren't fusible, and that's where your teams start becoming different from everyone else's. Um, but a lot of farmable monsters are used in uh, dungeon teams, you know. So that's that's really that's really something everyone needs to realize is that just because you get you can buy a bunch of packs and get a bunch of good summons doesn't mean you can venture off from not fusing any of the monsters. You know, Bella is probably one of the best healers I've used. Uh, Ariel is probably an exception, and Chisun is an exception. But other than that, I would say Bella is probably close to one of the better better healers in the game. So and, and that's a farmable monster too. So. So definitely look towards that. Look towards the uh, secret dungeons and towards scenario modes. And I know scenario modes take a, a lot longer to uh, to get the monsters. So.
hopefully you guys learned something from that and uh, that you managed to get some good information and you won't be in that ditch for the beginner level players, um, kind of mid-level. Uh, hopefully you won't be there for too long. I know a lot of players kind of hit that dip and don't know what to do. That's, you know, Ramagos is a good damage dealer too. He's not really hard to rune and get up. Just use him full energy when you're just starting out. You know, you can't really get vampire runes. So just do full energy, get his HP up, and uh, he can be a pretty good hitter for uh, some of you, especially in Arena. So on that note, guys, I'll leave you guys to it, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with um, hopefully some summons this week. Uh, I'd love to do some summons. Uh, i got a lot of people requesting. I'm just going to get some information through and uh, some stuff straightened out, and then we'll do some more summons. And I'm going to be trying to do more informational videos as well. And if you guys were with me on the Saturday Twitch session um i did quite a few a, a lot of uh, account reviews and i did a few on sunday and we also did the uh, giveaway and we got all the names uh i'll be doing i'll be um i'll be sending out or i'll be posting the video about the giveaway winners sometime during this week i've got them written down on a paper but i need to get that paper from my house uh because i went back to my house and did them there and also if you're on the twitch stream um You'll, you should have heard me say uh, that some of the Twitch streams I won't be posting up on YouTube for a while. Uh, if you saw the question video as well, uh, there was an incident with one of my uh, friends. Um, I, he sent a Skype message with his account info because he wanted me to do summons, and uh, some of that information got out, and uh, someone, some asshole, decided to go in and change some information and tried to take his account and everything, so... Uh, we're still getting that figured out, but um, I'm going to be steering clear of posting Twitch videos on YouTube just to stay away from that whole incident again. And um, so, yeah, so stay tuned for the giveaway announcements because uh, we already got our winners. And one of the winners already posted or sent me a message because he was on the Twitch stream. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys later.